He's got it. Yes, let's start with me. You can start with me. Are we up? Is your mic on though? Mine is on. I don't, I think you need to turn it on. The button on the back. And the light turns right. You gotta stand up. It's on the back of the mic. Green. Hey, we have one mic on, one mic not. There's a button. And then press it until it turns green. You gotta hold it and then the light comes on. Okay. All right, Mike's working. Go to the bell first. Go to the bell first. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got this one. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Gresham Chapel here at Woodward Academy. I am your anchor and host, Brian Keith Jackson. Today, you will observe a simulated Supreme Court experience. We have two cases on the docket today. And for the next several days, we'll have other cases that are going to be argued by students in my government econ class. Here's how it's going to work. Students from my government econ class have spent the last three months reading, writing, and researching various current Supreme Court cases. These students have been assisted by Ward Academy uh, champion debate coaches, um, Ms. Maggie Berthiewicz off to my left, and Mr. Bill Batterman off to my right. Um, they have been further assisted by uh, senior de varsity debate members Alex Dunner, Sahil Patel, Zoe Rosado, James Walker, and Karthik Srinivasan. The students in my class are be playing the role of lawyers using the skills that they have honed over the past three months. The students in my class will <clears throat> take their shot at trying to convince you, other student judges, and the gallery audience here at Gresham Chapel who are watching on Woodward Academy um, live via the internet that their side should win. Following the oral arguments, we will cut away from uh, the courtroom back to our studio. We will have color commentary from um, Mr. Batterman and Ms. Berthume, as well as uh, various uh, special guests depending upon when you sign on. Audience members here at Gresham Chapel have an opportunity to vote via their personal device, and so will you. They will be able to vote which attorney they believe did a better job, which side they predict the Supreme Court will rule, and which side they think should win. So you may do so by logging on to todaysmeet.com slash BKJ. All right, in that fashion, you will be able to chat with me live while the Supreme Court arguments are being taking, taking place and tell me what you think about the particular arguments. Now, students from Mr. Broad's veto class and my government class will play the role of judges or render judgment following the oral arguments of the first, uh, of the first case and a second case. We're doing things a little bit differently today in the sense that um, the two cases are Florida versus Harris and Florida versus Jardines. They'll, you will hear these cases back to back even though they're two separate cases. The reason why we're doing this today is because in real life, both these cases were actually heard before the United States Supreme Court back to back. And they both in involve drug sniffing dogs um, in the state of Florida. These cases are real, and as I said before, they're currently before the US Supreme Court. No one knows exactly, however, how each case will turn out. All right, so without further ado, let's kick off Supreme Court Week and Black History Month here at Woodward Academy. I hope you enjoy the arguments, and I hope that you learn something along the way. Now, um, Mr. Batterman, let's talk about these uh, cases before we actually hear the oral arguments. Um, as I understand, Florida versus Harris and Florida versus Jardines involved um, uh, individuals' basic right to privacy and the state's use of drug-sniffing dogs in this matter. Exactly. Expand on this. Please. So the, the issue of drug sniffing dogs is a relatively unique one, and it has only been dealt with by the Supreme Court three times uh, in the past. In United States v. Place, the first case about this in 1983, the Supreme Court ruled that the use of a drug sniffing dog is not a search under the Fourth Amendment because a drug sniffing dog only detects the presence of criminal activity uh, that has already uh, happened. So it only detects uh, criminal activity and reveals nothing else about an individual. There have been two subsequent cases in 2000 in City of Indianapolis versus Edmond, 
uh, checkpoints were ruled unconstitutional, but the court uh, re-upheld that drug sniffing dogs are not a search. And then the most recent case was in 2005, Illinois versus Caballes. Uh, the use of drug sniffing dog was again ruled uh, constitutional. And today we have two challenges uh, to that precedent, Florida v. Harris and Florida v. Jardines. All right, now, um, <clears throat> uh, Ms. Berthium, as a former attorney for the uh, ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, um, how would you handicap these cases and what would your comments uh, be? Well, we, we side against Florida in both of these cases. And why is that? In the Florida v. Harris case, uh, the, is, the issue at hand is the training of the dogs and whether a court has the right to hear the previous qualifications and how well the dog has done in other types of these drug searches. Um, Harris is going to argue that how good a particular dog is at actually detecting drugs should be an issue um, when determining if a search should take place, and we strongly agree with that. Obviously, when you're using canines, uh, there's a great variation in quality, uh, and we think that's an issue that should be allowed to be before the court. A dog that is not appropriately trained or perhaps is not as qualified uh, may not rise to the level of probable cause, and so we're going to decide on behalf of Harris on that one. In the Jardines case, it's a little bit of a different issue. Um, most of the previous drug-sniffing dog cases have involved uh, checkpoints or other vehicle searches. Um, and in this case, a drug-sniffing dog was used uh, to investigate the individual's uh, personal home. Um, and the Supreme Court has often upheld that the sanctity of a home is a, is a particularly strong issue, that it's a sanctuary uh, that has long been upheld as something that we believe in as Americans. And so we're going to decide on behalf of Jardines in this one and say that he should not have had his home searched by the drug-sniffing dog. All right. Well, we shall see if this is going to be the case. All right. Um, I think I hear the Supreme Court um, uh, is about to uh, begin. We'll see if the... Uh, statements that our color commentators made um, actually come to fruition. Um, now, without uh, further ado, uh, thank you very much for watching the opening comments on uh, WA Live. And we're going to cut to the courtroom and let's hear uh, from the Supreme Court and the lawyers who will be articulating their arguments before them. Supreme Court is now in session. The Honorable United States Supreme Court Justices presiding. The, the two cases on the docket for today is Florida v. Harris and Florida v. Jardines. Is the attorney for the state of Florida ready to proceed? Is the attorney for Mr. Harris ready to proceed? Uh, attorney for Florida, you may approach the podium. You have the court's attention. Um, hello, I'm Samantha Friedman <coughs> on the side, arguing for the side of Florida in the case of Florida versus Harris. Um, Clayton Harris was stopped by Deputy Wheatley for an expired license tag, and as the officer approached Harris, he noticed nervous shaking in an open container of alcohol. Harris admitted to the fact that he had an expired license tag, but refused to Beauty Wheatley's request to search the car. When the officer returned to his car to receive his canine, Aldo, Aldo sniffed the car and alerted there was something around the driver's door. The alert gave Deputy Wheatley a probable cause to search the car. As he searched the vehicle, he found tools for making methamphetamine and 200 loose pseudoephedrine pills, eight boxes of matches, a bottle of muriatic muriatic acid, two bottles of antifreeze, and iodine were also found. Harris stated that earlier that day he had visited three different Walgreens and two different grocery stores to purchase the Sudafed. He also 
went to two other stores to purchase 8,000 matches and recently had made meth in his house. He said that he had a huge drug, ad drug addiction and could go no longer than a few days without it. The question at hand is whether the canine's false positive actually was a reasonable cause under the Fourth Amendment for Deputy Wheatley to search Harris's car. Just as in the case, Illinois versus Cabela's, the dog's positive reaction to the scent of contraband does, does create a reasonable cause to search the car. The dog's nose only reveals information regarding what it is trained to sniff, and the dog's nose does not reveal extra information regarding the citizen except for his or her affiliation with the drugs. I believe that the court should charge Harris with the illegal contraband he had under his possession and for making the illegal drugs. Thank you. I have, I have a question. So uh, according to the information from uh, the, the appellant, um, the dog's sniffing capabilities have not been trained uh, to sniff pseudoephedrine, which is the drug in question. So how can you argue before us that that is a constitutional search, saying the dog indicated drug possession only to find a drug that the dog is not trained to um, Harris, detect? Harris had admitted that he had a huge drug addiction to meth, which is which was, pre the scent was present in the car, which is in fact an illegal contraband. Well, but if the scent, if the dog is not trained to smell the scent, then how would the police know that there was contraband in the car? I do not know the answer to that question. Can I research it? And Thank you. Uh, attorney for Mr. Harris, you may approach the bench. The podium, excuse me. I'm Daria Hossein, fighting for the side of the defendant Harris in the case Florida versus Harris. The opponent says, the prosecution states that there was in fact pseudoephedrine, 200 loose pills in Clayton Harris's car and there was, in fact, an open can of alcohol in the truck, and there were tools for making methamphetamine. The fact was that the client, my client was pulled over for an expired license plate, and the officer Wheatley had only the right to charge my client with the expired license plate was was just a ticket. It was. Yeah, you said that, uh, that there was an open alcoholic beverage in the car. It was in the car, and Officer Wheatley asked to look inside the car. My client refused, which is the correct Fourth Amendment right. Right, but if the if there is an open beverage in plain view, then the court has long held that that is a constitutional provision for searching the car. So was the search, are you arguing that the search was an extension of the activity of the dog, or the search is an extension of having the tail light and an open beverage in the cabin with the driver? The officer Wheatley used Aldo's sniff of the car as probable cause to search inside of Clayton Harris's car, which in fact violates the Fourth Amendment right because the canine unit that trained Aldo did not train him to look for pseudoephedrine. Um, attorney for the state of Florida, do you want rebuttal or do you wish to waive your rebuttal? <coughs> Thank you, counselors. We will take this case under advisement. We will hear the next case. Is the attorney for Florida ready to proceed? 
is the attorney for Mr. Jardines ready to proceed? Uh, you may approach the podium. Um, I'm Hamilton Jenkins, and I'll be um, arguing the side of the state of Florida in the case of Florida versus Hardeens. On the date of November 3rd, 2006, the Miami-Dade Police Department got an anonymous tip from the Crime Stoppers Unit that Mr. Holdes Jardines was growing marijuana inside his house. A month later, on December 6th, the police went to the house with um, a drug-sniffing dog to search the perimeter of the house. Once the dog went up to the front door, it got a strong smell of the um, legal drugs, and so did the officer, and they used that as probable cause to get a warrant. Once a warrant was, it, once a warrant was obtained, they um, proceeded to go inside the house and search, and they did, in fact, find um, cannabis on the um, premises. Why this doesn't violate the Fourth Amendment is because if you look at a previous case of Illinois versus Caballos, when um, Mr. Caballos was driving um, too fast and his car was stopped, and then the police officers did a drop, the police officers did a search, um, had a dog and searched around his car and did, in fact, um, find marijuana too, the Supreme Court ruled in the sixth majority that this did not violate the Fourth Amendment right. Also, yes, so Mr. Jenkins, that's a case that's dealing with the search of an automobile. We're talking about the search of a private home. Yes, but um, yes, but um, um it's. Well, I don't know the answer to that question, but. I'll well, because under your logic, then would it be okay for the police to walk up to private homes without probable cause, look in windows, and if they see well, something, then that would constitute probable cause? Well, they did have probable cause because um. The crime stop, they got a tip from the crime stoppers unit, and then the dog went and it smelled drugs, so they used that as probable cause to search the house. Um, and um, in another case, U.S. versus Place, um, a drug sniffing dog was um, in the airport and was sniffing um, luggage, and the Supreme Court also ruled that that was, did not violate the um, Fourth Amendment right. And um, what I want the court to do is I want the court to believe, um, find that a drug dog sniff does not violate the um, Fourth Amendment right, and I want Mr. Hardinas to be um, arrested for trafficking drugs. Thank you. You may approach the podium. Um, I'm Nicholas Stubbs, and I'm arguing for Mr. Hardinas. On December 6, 2006, two detectives and the trained dog approached the residence of my client, and the canine picked up the scent of narcotics along with the two detectives. They applied for a search warrant, and they charged Hardinas with tra trafficking cannabis, and he was arrested, but he pro protested that the dog sniff of marijuana was a violation of his Fourth Amendment. And the issue before this the Supreme Court is whether the police violated violated his Fourth Amendment by taking a trained dog to smell for drugs at the door where they suspected marijuana for being grown. But isn't isn't the use of police dogs standard important law enforcement tool? Yes, but um, in the case of Kylo versus United States, they ruled that. that a detection device is an, or a dog is an infraction, is not an infraction of the fourth, the fourth Amendment, but they need a warrant for it, and they did not have a warrant for the dog sniff. Well, but they had a... It, they had not, a warrant to, to search the house, but they did not have a warrant for the dog to sniff the house. Right, but w would not also it be a legitimate law enforcement tool for police to use informants? And if the informant has indicated something going on at the house, they got a search warrant based on the tip. And the fact that your, uh, your client was smoking marijuana, um, anybody that comes up to the house potentially could smell that. Someone could be walking by and smell it. Yes, they, did. they, they, had, they didn't have a search warrant, though. They, they, they had a probable cause, but they didn't have a search warrant for it yet. They were just investigating the case. So smelling marijuana would not be, you don't, you're arguing that, that does not constitute probable cause. 
No, I'm arguing that they needed a search warrant for the dog. They had probable cause. They did not have a search warrant for the dog. But the sniff. police could have walked up to the door yeah, without, they without the dog, and they could have smelled the marijuana themselves, yeah, but we're and that the would dog have constituted sniff, probable cause. Yeah, but not? we're arguing the dog sniff, not the police sniff. Or the police, or police when they smelled it. Because if they went to the house and smelled it, and they got a warrant for it, for it, and then they could have arrested them. But they didn't do that. And um, I want the uh, Supreme Court to rule in the favor of Hardinez and release the charges for his possession of marijuana. Do you want rebuttal or do you wish to waive rebuttal? Thank you, counselors. We will take this case under advisement. The United States Supreme Court is now adjourned. All rise. All right. Um, welcome back to WA Live Court TV edition. Um, I'm sitting here with um, ACLU attorney <clears throat> Ms. Uh, Maggie Berthume, and also I'm sitting with uh, former uh, U.S. attorney uh, Bill Batterman. And we're going to discuss the two cases we heard before the Supreme Court today, uh, Florida versus Harris and Florida versus Jardines. All right. Um, um, Ms. Berthew, let's start with you with respect to the um, Florida versus Harris case. Uh, what were your thoughts on the proceedings, on how the, stu uh, the, the student lawyers did, and how would you handicap this case? Well, in the Harris case, I think um, the, the lawyers identified the critical issue, um, which for us is one of training. Uh, the, the state Supreme Court in Florida ruled that it's not unreasonable to require uh, police officers to keep training records and to keep field detection records on particular dogs and that that should be admissible. That said, I think the court is very unlikely uh, to rule on behalf of Harris here. Um, they're Why likely, is that? They're likely to try and protect uh, the sort of ability of the police force to be as flexible as possible um, and perhaps um, think that it might be too burdensome for them to keep these types of records. Uh, or that it might make it too difficult for law enforcement officials to use uh, detection dogs, which uh, they want to protect. Okay. Um, how would you handicap the case in the sense that um, um, knowing, as you know, the, the Supreme Court justices as they are presently constituted, um, would you care to give us your opinion as to which, uh, what the numbers are going to be? Certainly the more conservative members are, are very likely to rule on behalf of Florida. Um, the, the liberal justices are, are far more likely to believe that, that Harris uh, has a strong case here based on the training, but I think it's going to be hard to get. It will likely be a 5-4 either way, um, and I think Kennedy is likely to go on behalf of Florida in this particular case, ruling that drug-sniffing dogs just aren't a search, and so they don't need to keep those types of training records. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. 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 Batterman, let's talk to you about the other um, case that we heard today, uh, the uh, Florida versus Jardines case. Essentially, it's a, an extension of the same issue. Uh, the state of Florida seems to be renowned for using uh, police sniff dogs um, to detect drugs and other things. Um, first, comment on how you believe the student lawyers performed in front of the Supreme Court, and then comment on how you would handicap this particular case? Okay, well, I think that the, the interesting thing about both cases, but particularly uh, the Jardines case, is that uh, there is a conflict of interest between law enforcement and the protection of uh, individuals' uh, homes and their privacy in their homes. Uh, and clearly that's the, the distinguishing issue. I think that's why this case is uh, perhaps more likely to go the other way, which I'll talk about in a minute. 
Um, but the law enforcement has a very strong incentive to continue using dog sniffing uh, techniques to detect drug use. Florida has a very bad uh, drug problem, so does uh, much of the rest of the United States, and law enforcement relies heavily on uh, that method, uh, which is less intrusive than alternative methods uh, that law enforcement could pursue. I think that's something that uh, the representative from Florida uh, needed uh, to speak more about. Uh, the reason that I think that uh, it's likely that uh, the decision is in favor of Jardinus is because the Supreme Court has demonstrated, uh, and especially the conservative justices have demonstrated, a very strong belief that an individual's home is their sanctuary uh, and that there is a different standard applied to homes versus public areas. So while uh, a justice like Roberts or Alito uh, or Scalia would certainly say that you can use a drug sniffing dog uh, in an airport or a traffic stop, uh, they have uh, demonstrated in the past that they hold a higher standard when law enforcement approaches an individual's home. Uh, so I would guess, uh, based on their track record, that uh, they will not overturn dog sniffing. Uh, it will still not constitute a search under the Fourth Amendment, but uh, it will not be allowed uh, at individuals' homes without probable cause. Oh, that's interesting. So in other words, what you're saying is that uh, we can essentially have two cases, both in Florida, both involving dog sniffing, and your commentary is that you think with respect to the car being in the public, that drug dogs, that dog sniff case will be okay. Yeah. But the drug dog at someone's home. is held to a higher standard. That's held to a higher standard. Yeah. All right. Now, Ms. Berthume, uh, you've heard Mr. Batterman speaking. You are a former ACLU attorney. Um, do you have any um, uh, comments with respect to Mr. Batterman's analysis? I think that he might be right about the ultimate outcome, although, of course, uh, we would support uh, Harris and Jardines in, in, both, in both cases. cases. Yeah. Do you make the same distinction um, with respect to, in the Harris case, you're talking about a car on a public street versus, in the Jardines case, you're talking about an individual in his private home? As the ACLU, we think that people have a right to privacy wherever they are. Um, and that it's important that uh, those protections be applied, especially given that in the Harris case, uh, the training of the dog is, is very much an issue in determining whether uh, that search was legal. If, if the dog was not trained to detect methamphetamines, it was a very clear false positive. Um, and not being it allowed to discuss whether that particular dog had had many false positives in the past, which he had, really hampered uh, the ability of Harris to, to make his case. Um, and I think that that really should come down on the side of Harris. But I, I do agree with Mr. Batterman um, that Florida is likely to prevail on that case simply because uh, the court wants to preserve latitude for police officers and doesn't want to <coughs> discourage police officers from using these types of protection methods. Probably uh, if the police officers were required to demonstrate the training of the dog, they might just be more likely to not use the dogs at all. Um, which obviously the state of Florida believes is an important issue. So you think that the Supreme Court um, will find complete and accurate record keeping of every dog sniffed to be too burdensome on the state of Florida and won't require that? We don't think it's too burdensome. The you know, state Supreme Court in the state of Florida uh, generally agreed, but uh, we think that the court is likely to find that it will be. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, thank you very much for tuning in to uh, WA Live Court TV edition. We're now going to uh, turn our attention to the uh, Supreme Court as I think they're going to come back in and give us their verdict on the two cases we just heard today, Florida versus Harris and Florida versus Jardines. All right, turn back to me for a second, if you would. Okay, it seems like we have a little bit of a delay um, in the <clears throat> Supreme Court um, uh, coming back and ruling on this case. So I'm going to do something a little bit out of character. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, talk to the audience members in the gallery and try to get their impressions of um, how they think the cases worked.
All right. Um, do we have any um, uh, members of the gallery? Um, what do you all think? What do you all think about drug sniffing dogs and whether or not you think that's constitutional? Would you be okay with um, uh, any police officer coming up to you and you put their dog to see if you are sniffing any drug? Uh, to see if you are in possession of any drugs? Yes. Um, I, think, I think that it's okay as long as there is um, probable cause. Like if they have smelled like marijuana on you or something else. Okay, do we have any other comments about um, the constitutionality of uh, drug sniffing? Are any of you all okay with uh, what the state of Florida did in these two cases? Or would you like to comment on any of the student performances? Yes. All right, all right. Please, uh, please stand up and tell us who you are and what your comment. I'm Shawnee, and I think that the drug sniffing dogs could be like really helpful for situations because could. I think it's constitutional for them. To do you, do you have any problem with the possibility of what about your the individual's right to privacy? Um, do you have any um, concerns that um, perhaps the government is overreaching when it tries to uh, go out of its way to find you are whether or not you are in possession of uh, any drugs? Well, no, because I think it, they're like trying to keep the society safe, for, and if it's going to help keep us all safe by the drug sniffing dogs, then I think it's okay. All right, so, and I think this is what the crux of the case is about. On the one hand, you have the governmental interest that you just described in terms of making sure that um, we live in a safe society. On the other hand, um, you have the potential of abuse in the sense that the government's very powerful, yet we still have a right to privacy. The individual has uh, rights, and that's in part the reason why uh, the first ten, uh, ten amendments known as the Bill of Rights was passed. All right. Um, next question I have for you all is: uh, Do you have any uh, comments or suggestions, or, or in terms of what a, which one of the student arguments did you find most persuasive? Any thoughts on that? Which students did you find, which arguments did you find most persuasive? Which students did you find most persuasive? All right, um, I'm sorry, I, I'm getting the signal that the Supreme Court is now ready to come back in session. Um, I want to thank you as a gallery audience for participating in the Supreme Court week, and um, we shall have the uh, verdict shortly so everyone will know um, what our student judges thought about these two cases. In the case of Florida versus Harris, the court finds in favor of the state of Florida that the search um, of the car with the dog did not violate the defendant's Fourth Amendment rights. In the case of Florida versus Ardenes, uh, the court finds in favor of the appellant um, and rules that the search using the dog of the house was unconstitutional. United States Court is now adjourned. <laughs>